It's Friday morning and I just got the urgency to finally do some listing this week. So I will be listing some fabric items, those ones that I showed in the last video. But real quick, I want to show you my new business cards that arrived. I'm still waiting on the thank you cards that I ordered that go in my packages to arrive. But I'll go ahead and show you these. So let's take a look. Here are my cards. They are beautiful. I love how they turned out. They have the little hot air balloons on there from the Pyrex pattern. That's the one side, and the other side is all informational. Text realniftyvintage.com that takes you to my Etsy store. And there's my email if you want to get a hold of me for any questions or anything like that. And this is a great segue to mention that um, YouTube is taking away the private messaging feature. So I've had a few messages sent to me through YouTube and I've respond, responded to, <laughs> I have responded to those, but I don't think YouTube does a very good job at letting people know that they have a message because even whenever I did receive a message from someone, I had no clue until I clicked into it and then I seen the message, but I've re if you've sent me anything on YouTube, I've responded just so you know to go look for the message in the message center. But I actually that doesn't even matter because they they're taking that away. You'll no longer be able to see any messages that you've sent or received through YouTube. So yes, there's my email. So I'll show you real quick what I've got to list. It's actually more than I even figured. So we have packaged sheets. Those are easy to list because it says exactly what's in there, all the size, all the sizes. Then we have things like this, a sheet, another sheet. Then we have these scarves that I completely forgot that I had. Here's a nice, I think it's bark cloth, tablecloth. A couple more scarves, another package, whoopsie, another package sheet, um, plaid, more plaid, this floral here. Then we have this green chevron, rainbow chevron. Then over here we have Barney uh, pillowcase, or maybe there's a couple. And then some sheets, lots of sheets of Barney. Then we have this little stack here, this floral here. <laughs> More fun florals. Then we got blue florals, Tweety Bird packaged sheet and then this waffle weave acrylic blanket so <laughs> all right so i just got my little postcard inserts and i'm so happy with them i have a box of a thousand here so that should last me for a while but they are one-sided there's the front and then there's the back so the front is a high gloss and the back is flat so i can actually write on it still if there's a message that I'm supposed to include. Sometimes people want to have a gift message added so that, you know, if it's like for a birthday or a present or anything like that. So very cool. All right, so I just finished up all of these nice fabric pieces and it was about 23 items. And I guess, let's see, about, it's about one o'clock now. So it took me, um, just under two hours, I think. Oh, I'm so glad to be done with this and I really need to back off on this fabric stuff because it just builds up and I don't, I, I mean, I love selling it because it has good margins and it's very easy to ship, but this is a whole process. I'm telling you, it's nothing. Like I could have done the same photographs if these were all hard good items in 30 minutes or at the very most 40 minutes for the same amount of items but I can't help myself sometimes two things sold that are going out this morning and first thing that sold are these zinc lids it's a mixed lot of 12 and they are mostly unbranded I think there might be a couple that say ball in here but for the most part they don't say anything on them and they have porcelain inserts. 
And so it's a, it's a set of 12 and this set right here sold for $22 and that includes shipping. I'm going to ship them in a flat rate bubble mailer and those cost about $7.10 I think. So I'll be netting about $14 or $15 on these. We've got this Cocker Spaniel chalkware piece and this was just a giant mistake to buy. I bought it at a yard sale, I don't even know, I think it was last season, at the end of last season, and I paid either 75 cents or a dollar for it. It sold for the grand total of $10 and that includes shipping. Yeah. So I got the two items wrapped. These are the zinc lids in the Priority Mail flat rate envelope and they are just in rows of six, one, two, three, four, five, six, stacked too high with cardboard on the top and bottom and bubble wrap. So they're well protected. And then this is actually, I'm so happy, it was able to be fit, it was able to go first class. So it just is under a pound and this is the chalkware item. Same principle, I wrapped it in scraps of cardboard around it and then lots of bubble wrap. So that's awesome. Now that will make me a little bit more money and I won't be only making a dollar. I'll make maybe three or four dollars on it. And then while I was doing all that, I sold this little guy here. It's an ET phone home glass. I sell the heck out of these. And it's just a limited edition Pizza Hut glass from I think 1982 it says. And this here sold for $16 and it will go in a eight by eight by eight box right down here. So I will go ahead and wrap that up. So this is the dilemma that I run into sometimes. This is the ET glass and I have it on the scale and it's pretty much all wrapped except for the top layer that I would put in. And I usually would put crushed paper in just like I did on the bottom. But the weight is already over a pound. It's one pound point zero two ounces. So there's a few ways that I combat this issue and the first thing that I try to do is consider if there's anything that I can replace with other shipping materials. So this, the glass itself needs to be protected the most. So I have it wrapped in bubble wrap and then on all sides, the paper. That I'm not gonna touch, that's the way that I always do it and everything always arrives well. This first layer of paper here, it's so scientific. Let's see how much it weighs. That in itself weighs 1.1 ounce. So we only need 0 0.02, but if I just take this and I set it to the side and instead pull, let's see, I've got a sheet of bubble wrap, but I like to use these when I can. Instead, if I grab some of these, I think we'll grab, we need two sets of three, one for the top, one for the bottom. So now I'll take and put one hand, it is not good for this. <laughs> I'll put one set of three on the bottom and one set of three on the top and I'll be right back and we'll see where we are on the weight. Okay, so we're now at 15.3. That's really good. The only thing is it's not as compact as I would normally like. See, there's still room right there. I will put another set of two of these the opposite direction right on top just to make sure that there is no movement and here's two straight ones I have so we'll go ahead and put two that way and push it down and we're literally it just added 0.1 to that it was 15.2 so we saved the day right there and all of that work and effort because Otherwise, this would be charged at not first class mail, and I would owe an additional three or four dollars. So it does add up. And I did that not once, but twice a day. I did it here and here, so I saved just eight dollars right there. Well, I'm printing out the labels now. This is not the most ideal solution with the, a regular printer because of you have the ink and the labels and everything. I would eventually like to get one of the thermal printers, but with my computer set up the way that it is with a Chromebook, there's not many options of printers, thermal printers that connect with the computer. So I have to do it this way with Google AirPrint 
because with Chromebooks, you can connect your printers with the Google Air software so that it works that way. So, but it doesn't take that long. I just printed out three labels just like that. And now they'll go on. Each one of these labels, I'll show you like this. So the page is divided into two halves the left and the right. My hand's over the label that actually got printed on. The left side has not been printed on. Each label is three cents. What I'll do is I'll peel this side off, stick it on the box, and then put the, put the remainder of the sheet back in the printer so that it prints on the other half of it. This paper is my second batch of paper and it's from a different company from the first. What I find is that it curls. So at, especially after the first run, that it goes through, the, the paper curls a little bit, and that's not a huge deal, except for sometimes it will want to catch on the printer head and make a big black streak on the edge here, which is basically just a waste of ink and it doesn't look very nice. But other than that, the labels do pretty well for me. <laughs> There's a squirrel up there. I don't know if you can see it. Right here. I think there's a couple more. Oh, there's one right there. And I thought there was a third one. Oh, right up, right up there, <laughs> right in the middle. They are so funny. They like to chase each other around on the trees and it's so fun to watch. Stella McDo, what is she doing over there? So I want to go ahead and finish this vlog out with a little haul. I went to a couple different Goodwills and I striked out at some and I found some pretty cool things at others. So at one Goodwill I went to, I was able to find these hats. This one is Mighty Ducks National Hockey League in really nice shape. Pretty darn clean and it looks vintage to me. And then we have here a Florida Mar Marlins or Marlins, I guess, right? Um, $2 as well. This one has a tiny bit of dirt on the inside, but I can spot clean that right up. It's not as old, I don't think, but that'll be very good for eBay, probably, and I think I could sell it for at least $10 or $15, plus a couple dollars shipping. This one here, I could probably get a little bit more because it is vintage and it's really cool. I like the denim, so that's awesome for $2 a piece on those. I also grabbed these. They are actually pretty darn heavy to ship and I'm trying to get away from all of this kind of stuff, but I already have these listed. It's the same exact ones that I have listed. They are amber glass. I think they're called Georgian. I think they're Anger Hawking Georgian or something, but they're really cool. They have a honeycomb design on the outside and I actually have three sets of four. So I went ahead and updated my quantity online to represent how many I, I have. So now I have four sets of these exact glasses and I think I have them listed for $44 and that includes shipping and I paid 50 cents a piece at Goodwill. So someone tried to sell these at a yard sale, of course, and that didn't work, but I went ahead and bought them. Um, at a different Goodwill, this was in another town that we were passing through. Forgot why we went there. Oh, we wanted to go to Orion Steakhouse and we don't have one over here anymore. So actually it's, I, is it Mountain, it's Mountain Vernon, Illinois and they have Orion's Steakhouse. So I really wanted to go to one. Um, I'm not really missing out. It's sort of like Golden Corral anymore. It says, anyway, this mug says his on either side. I got it because Father's Day is coming up and I think I could sell this pretty darn easily. 50 cents in pretty nice clean shape and it's marked on the bottom GHC England don't know what that means I have not looked it up yet but it's a cool mug so I'm going to probably sell this for $20 and that includes shipping and then I got this one this one is really cute with the hot air balloons it's made by it's Otagari Japan Merrily Carol so 50 cents, awesome, clean shape. If I can't sell it, then I'll keep it. But one of these was listed on eBay when I checked it at the Goodwill and they wanted $24 with, I can't remember if that was plus shipping or included, but either way, that's a really good amount if they can get it. So I'll check it out again 
and if I can sell it for at least $15, then that would be really cool. At the Goodwill in Mount Vernon, so I, I mentioned that. Oh, I just noticed a little issue. Well, that's okay. In the Mount, Mount Vernon location, Goodwill, I was able to get these series of items here. I don't ever find these Welch jars, but I did for 50 cents at that location. Or, <laughs> that's not funny. Whatever. So 25 cents at a yard sale, 50 cents at Goodwill. But um, I don't ever find these. And it's awesome. It's in good shape. So I don't know. I might keep it. I might hold on to it until I can find more or I'll check it out online to see if it's worth listing by itself. But I have a feeling that it's only worth maybe three or four dollars. Okay, so I grabbed these. They are salt and pepper shakers. I noticed the chip just now on there, but cows are popular. I have extra stoppers to put on. That one still has a stopper. And what does that say? Oh, it's Taiwan. So probably the 70s or so. They need to be cleaned severely, but I think I'm gonna be able to sell them for probably at least $3 in the booth. And if I can get more online, then I will. Online, if this wasn't chipped, I could have probably got um, $16 with shipping included pretty easily. I grabbed this, 50 cents. I don't know what it is. I feel like, <sighs> I feel like you could put that in a kitchen and put like a little recipe on there or something, but it's like a little music stand, a miniature size. So I just thought it was cool. It's brass and um, yeah, thought 50 cents would be good enough price to buy it. These were really exciting for me to find. They were 50 cents a piece and they are made by Westwood 1997. So they are considered vintage. And there's Campbell Soup handled mugs in pretty nice shape. So that one, I don't, I haven't actually looked at these all the way. Hark, what soup lies yonder there? This one just has the pair of them. Does there any, that's just, and then this one has the regular old logo on there. Huh, pretty cool. So 50 cents a piece on those. And I checked these out online and I could probably sell the set of three for around between 30 and $40 with shipping included. So that's pretty cool. The, this is a tote that I keep upstairs in the dining room. And as I clean items and they are ready to be listed, they go in this tote so that I can march them downstairs and then proceed to photograph them. So that's how I keep things organized. So they stay on the table until I'm ready to wash them and then I'll go wash them in the sink. They'll dry, obviously. And then I put them in the tote. And then once I'm ready to take them downstairs and put them on the table, then they can be staged for photographing and measurements and all of that. So anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of everything. Like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.